Friday, February 16th, Market Analysis, Stan Ehrlich, and we have some potential major new sell signals developing in the stock market indexes now, today, as we speak. I'll take a close look at this situation immediately. The E-mini. Whoops, wrong keys. And we have a bearish engulfing. Current tick is below the previous close on the, uh, e, excuse me, E-mini. We have an outside, we almost, sorry, on the E-mini have a lower low. We need to get below yesterday's low to generate the sell signal on the E-mini. Now, that has not happened yet. So you got to go all the way down and make a new low for the day. Then we will end up with my red bearish engulfing sell signal. Whoops, I dragged something where I should not have dragged it. Just a moment. Uh, there we go. And back. Now, the E-mini one minute data. You can see that the range of yesterday had a low down here. This morning, we came extremely close to making that low lower than yesterday, but it didn't do it. It came close. This morning, early, we made higher highs, no problem. Then almost, but not quite the lower low. And now we're back down on the day a very minor 10 points, you know, good, but not good enough yet. Next chart. This is the spider. Uh, we have um, just a second delayed data. So I'm going to pass on the spider at the moment. Yesterday we had and that and that. So I can't show you what I wanted. Okay, well, then I'm going to switch. First time I've ever done this to Trade Station and the E Mini. We're going to start over again, except I want to go to my index workspace and show you. Here we go. There's a bearish engulfing ER sell signal using Trade Station at the moment on the daily data chart because we do have a lower low and a higher high on the SPY and this could lead to a minor double top. Now, if that's true, not a very perfect one, but still it would look like one if we started to go straight down, which is exactly what I think we're about to do. We need to break below 490. Then the downside objective with the high being approximately 503, we got 13 points. We're going to go to 8077, which guess what is down to about here. And that is right smack dab around my support area. The first downside objective I've been talking about for weeks. If things are falling together, I hope. I expect, I think so. I need to stay lower on the day. Lower the better. Making new lows for the day before this three-day weekend. Remember, Monday's President's Day. We could drop off quite a bit more before the close. Now I'll go to the um, DIA, Trade Station Daily Data DIA. It's a doji. It's an inside day. There's no signal here, but you know it's going to follow with a spider. And the QQQ has a bearish engulfing ER cell signal today, right now, working out actually a little bit better than the SPY at this point. It's down more. The spider is only down around 80 points or so. The QQQ is down 2.3. And it's got an outside day, sell signal. Not quite the double top that the S&P looks like. Nevertheless, it's a sell signal. <coughs> and the minimum downside objective would probably be in the area of my support levels. This line keeps floating around and it shouldn't on trade station. That's not a good thing but I correct it and closing an old gap back in January 18, 19. Yep. That'll happen. It'll come back to support and we might get low enough to be oversold at the same time. So that's around the price level. 
at which I expect it to turn back up again. Now that's not necessarily my minimum downside objective. And if I do only get 413 and then back up, it'll only take about a week and a half. But this whole thing here, starting from January 22-ish to today, and maybe the next few trading days, looks like a much, a little bit more, not, not, not a lot, but a little bit more significant top than we had a week or two ago. So I have to include the possibility of it coming all the way back down to 388. Now that would be a pretty darn good break. That's back to where it was on the beginning of December. So my minimum 413 and a couple spots on the way down, there's also 395 and maybe the big support area down to here. But that seems a little unlikely. And any other on TradeStation? Nope. So now I'm going back to NinjaTrader. There we go. Uh, NASDAQ futures, one minute. You can see it's been dropping back down again. By the way, this whole thing started with a very small, relatively flat head and shoulder top this morning. And when I mean this morning, California time, 12, 1 o'clock, 1.30 a.m. No, 12.30 a.m. in the middle of the night. Little rally, pulled back a little bit more. Then the rolling head of the formation, then back down to about the same levels, bounced around again a little bit, and kaboom. Minimum downside objective fulfilled in just literally minutes. I'm not sure what caused this big break, but obviously something. And then it kept on going. Now it's gotten below the previous day's low, generating the bearish engulfing. Next, NASDAQ March futures contract. Here we go. ER signal, ER red. Bearish engulfing daily data on the NASDAQ March futures contract. We have a fill. We have futures. We have the trade. We have the signal. Everything's working fine. On our way down, if the market continues to close below the previous day's close. Next, bonds dri dribbling off a little bit, not too much, but trying to make a lower low. I think it will. I'm not really bearish, remember, on stock market indexes and interest rate futures. I'm just a little bit more reactionary. <coughs> I think that soon, it might even take a month or two at the most, we're going to see some bottoms and some significant buying opportunities. But you got to wait a little while if you're a swing trader or a longer term trader. Yeah, scalpers do their own thing in a different manner. That's fine, as long as it works for you. Notes. Same kind of comment. Did make a minor new low. Looking for a little bit lower. Not too much. Next, crude oil. Not too much to say here. The last couple of months have been up slowly. Pretty much like an upward slanting channel, but I don't think the lines are very parallel. Not too bad, but not quite parallel across the top and the bottom. That's the bull trend line across these short-term bottoms for the last two and a half months. But the bigger picture is sideways to lower. And ever since, of course, April, uh, September, it's been lower. I don't have much faith on any rallies. I'm not looking for any big move up. I am looking for more sell signals. And we're not quite overbought, but pretty soon, a little bit more rally and we'll be there. And then I'm going to be squawking about a potential sell signal and watch out. Here comes a break, but not quite yet. Natural gas, new low ground, very oversold. Looks like it's prime territory for a bullish engulfing ER buy signal, but not happening yet. Next, heating oil. We are neutral on RSI, very much so, 50-ish. <laughs> the longer term trend is a little bit in question. You could say down because most of the rallies have failed except for the last couple of months. And you know, you've got a decent low in December a couple of months ago, and it's made higher highs fairly consistently since then. I don't have any major sell signals. I would have hoped to have. Um, actually, I think I did, and it's not showing up. I don't have my strategy turned on. I apologize for that. We did get a sell signal on heating oil. 
just a second. And I think I can show it to you on TradeStation in a couple of seconds. And absolutely the answer is yes, except I have to do this and pull it over and blow it up. And there is the heating oil continuation contract sell signal. Perfect. Only three days ago, almost on top, looking for a further move down. We did make new lows. Bingo. I just don't have at the moment the strategy turned on for Ninja Trader. Sorry about that. I have to get used to Ninja Trader a little bit more. But I noticed the outside trading day and it had a red body. Plus, I noticed that we were overbought within the last couple of days or the day of the bearish engulfing. So I said, hey, that looks like a sell signal. Verified it on TradeStation. Here we go. Next chart. This is, of course, gold. Remember last year, I sure do, one heck of a great year for precious metals. Buy signal on the bottom, February. Buy signal on the bottom day. When I mean bottom, I mean bottom day, uh, August 21st. And a buy signal on the bottom day, October 6th. For as far as the highs are concerned, we got a sell signal on February 23rd on the high day. Again, the high day, January 20, the high, well, a day or two after the high day, almost a high day on October 31st, and of course, a whopper of a high day on December 4th. I screamed bloody murder on that day. It didn't come down a lot for a very long period of time, but it was an excellent signal and an excellent trade. They don't all produce gigantic profits. I'd like to say they do, and they don't all work. Some of them don't. And I'm obviously showing you the ones that did. Silver is unbelievably even better. Now, the bottoms, I only got three major ones last year. That's one, that's two, and that's three of them. But the sell signals, top, 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 almost the top, top, five last year. What can I say? Currently, a little rally is developing. I don't have much faith in this. I still think I have to be neutral to a little bit on the bear side. We're getting close to overbought, so I'm getting close to squawking about a potential new short sale signal, which hasn't happened yet. So a little friendly short term. Next, platinum. Nothing new here. A little bit of a rally. Uh, not too much to say. Neutral to bearish. Next, high grade, copper. Same kind of thing. I'm between a rock and a hard spot. We're right about the middle of it, almost exactly. So we could rally up to resistance again, or we could start to turn down. We're not overbought yet, so that's not quite there. Doesn't have to be overbought to turn down. So I'm neutral at the moment. Next, soybeans, beginning of the grain group, oversold or extremely close to it yesterday. Yep, looks like a oversold level yesterday of 25.6. That is super close to 25 or less. Anyway, bouncing a little today in the area of support, probably going to bounce a little bit more. I have to bring to your attention that this is almost exactly the same price low that happened way back on May 31st of 23. And I think there's a low, oh yeah, much, much earlier, two of them, July and August, or no, both of them July of 22, a year and a half ago. This price level for soybeans is a profound long-term support level, closing below about 11.57, which is super close to the lows of yesterday and today, would probably be, in my opinion, very long-term bearish. Now, one caveat here. Remember, we're kind of close to oversold. So on downside breakouts, you're not, it's not unusual to get oversold. But the rally fails to get back up above resistance, which is right now a little support, support. And then it continues to go lower again after that. So I'm not going to be surprised if we get the major breakout, a little bounce to some resistance, and then keep on trending down in the months and months and months to come. 
for soybeans if it breaks that support level. Next, soybean meal, uh, oil, sorry, close to its lows, coming down, probably going to make new lows, not oversold yet, looking for support to maybe cause a bounce. Meal, soybean meal, in support, and it's bouncing, just like I probably mentioned yesterday. So that's nice. How far is it going to bounce? Well, there's a decent chance I can get 360, maybe 370 out of it. But I'm not too fond of a long-term big rally. I think the problems are more on the upside than on the downside. And I think because of our deflationary situation uh, lately, that we're probably going to see new lows again. Next is corn, which has been doing that new low thing for a long time, months and months. And it's going to keep coming down, in my opinion. This low in corn is starting to get close to the lowest low since, oh, I don't know, June or maybe even earlier. I didn't load the data of 21, 2021. We're coming super close to those lows. Next, wheat. Pretty much the same kind of commentary. This uh, chart goes back to, oh, we're already down there. Yep. This is new lows for a few years. And today, we just touched the previous low made on 11.27. So I think it's going to get broken. One comment, if it doesn't get broken and we turn around and start to rally, we are oversold right now. First time in a couple of weeks or more. Then you've got the makings of maybe a double bottom formation, but that remains to be seen. It's too premature to tell you I'm getting a double bottom yet. Need to see a little bit of a rally first before I start talking about that more. But hey, we're at the previous low. That is some support, and we're oversold. Next chart. Uh, hogs. Making minor new highs, but having a little trouble staying there at the moment. And it is at resistance. And it was overbought just a few days ago. This is a prime level for a top. Looking for a turn down. Hasn't happened yet in hogs. Let's see what happens. Um, did, I, did I talk about cattle? I'm sorry, this is cattle. Beg my pardon. Oops. Bad me. So this is cattle. Now, hogs. Almost the same comments, though. At resistance, overbought. At a previous high. Looks like both cattle and hogs are going to turn down. This is hogs. Next is OJ. Well, as you know, I am basically long-term bearish in orange juice. This signal right here is a bearish ER cell signal. I've got to get this working for you for next Tuesday. I probably will not have a YouTube on Monday. It is President's Day. And since I used to be president of the brokerage company, I'm going to take a holiday. A good excuse, huh? Now, that's also a bearish engulfing on the very top of the OJ market. And that is also a bearish signal on the first shoulder of a head and shoulder top. Ninja Trader does not have the ability to draw a nice curve or arch. I inquired a couple of different times at technical help for these people. They just can't do it at this point. Trade Station does draw a very nice curving arch mark, which I was using to depict turning points or bring it to your attention. Here, I'm struggling to find an icon or some image to duplicate what I was doing in Trade Station. Anyway, that's a head and shoulder top. It worked great. Now we're back up again. Bearish engulfing worked for the third time. Great. I think it's going to make new lows very soon. This could end up being a very, very long-term, the last signal a few days ago, top. Next, oh my God, Coco. I talked about a blow-off top starting probably on February 7th. It might have been a day or two earlier, but 7th and 8th and 9th, yep. So here on Monday the 12th, 
we started going sideways. I thought it was going to go straight back down. Usually a blow off top is a spike top or a V top, although they usually call them V bottoms, but the eh, same thing on top. And it didn't, it went sideways. And then it frustratingly went sideways again on Tuesday and frustratingly again on Thursday, or I meant Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And today, bingo, we broke below this week's lows. And we are currently staying at or below the low of the whole week so far after making significant new lows. I talked about using a particular price level yesterday for a new short sale. We are almost exactly at the moment at that level. This is not an official recommendation. You guys know the NFA and CFTC uh, requires, you know, past performance is not indicative of future results and hypothetical returns has some inherent limitations. Disclaimer, that's the minimum. I guess how many million times I've said that. But anyway, this looks to me like it's on its way down and a lot. Next, coffee. Not really much to say. Pass, except I could probably use some more coffee this morning. Next, sugar. Not too much to say, except, yeah, it got close to oversold, but not good enough. But it seems to be bouncing off of support, which is no surprise. I would have liked the combination of oversold and support, but hey, a little bounce at the moment. Not particularly impressive. We're between a rock and a hard spot again. Let's see what happens. And we've got cotton, our last chart. I got to tell you the exact same thing that I said in cocoa. This looks like a blow off top. We haven't seen it turn down yet. In fact, I'm spouting my mouth off here when it's practically high and last. Who in the right mind would tell you the market is going to top out when it's going straight up, screamingly straight up? Maybe in all-time new historic highs. I'm not sure that's true, but new highs for quite a while. Well, it's not, you know, not historic. But for a couple of years, this still looks like a blow-off top. So obviously, I'm looking for a sell signal. Maybe we'll get it next week. That's it. You guys have a great weekend. Profitable trading for you. I'm sleeping in late on Monday morning. Hasta luego.